time with Enjoy and John Bucket Timer. Huge shout out to our partners, Point Spit, for all that they do, for giving us the platform, for giving us the opportunity, for giving me the fucking microphone. John Bucket Timer, the war cry is back. Holy shit! <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad the war cry is back, though, because I if I have to see a single person tweet at me saying buckets, why was Ian so quiet? We need the war cry. We need it. You have it now. We have it. The war cry is back. Thank you and welcome, Ian. The war cry is back. Welcome to episode number fifty nine, everybody. Buckets. This is episode number 59. Don't fucking make a mistake again. I want our people to know exactly what they're listening to and where to find their bets. How you doing, buddy? I'm doing well, Ian. I'm going to a big music festival out in Vegas in three weeks. And you're giving me good preparation for that because you're blowing out the eardrums, you know, before it even started. So I think that's a good thing. Did you ask producer Rob for some time off to go to this event? Oh, I have not talked to producer Rob about it yet. He says, no, you're fucked. Okay, good, good. Just All kidding. All things going Just well. kidding. I know you've been working out in the gym for the last six months for this oh. event. I mean, this must be a hell of an event. Are you in at least good shape now for this event? I, man, I hope so. I f- I'm feeling like I'm in good shape. It's it's going out to EDC out in Vegas, so a couple days out in the desert. Want to look good with the shirt off, you know, impress everyone with my my Bayern Munich cut off and all that good stuff. And I I think it'll be fun for everybody who watches the YouTube platform. Can we see your physique right now? Is there a chance we can get you to have a shirtless episode? Uh, I'd have to check with producer Rob on that because we almost showed the Byron tattoo on the thigh once and that did not get approved. So producer we'll Rob says it. no chance at all. All right, let's all right, move on. Over to Hey buckets. Our people have spoken here. We have an unbelievable following and our people were left incredibly disappointed in episode number 58. Now we were slightly pressured into having a quicker episode. Can you guys just hurry the fuck up and get to the bets? I mean, from all around, we were hearing pressure about making a rapid show, being a little quieter, less in your face. And then all of a sudden, the loyal listeners have spoken the loyal listeners did not like the shorter show they didn't which i was surprised by because i know we're entertaining i know we're both beautiful i know we make a great show here ian but i thought people were going to be a little bit more pick focus and i saw more comments saying damn it why did you short me 20 minutes than i saw people were excited about the picks yeah and they did not like the fact that we didn't have much of a chat yet before we got into our bets <laughs> either they also didn't like the fact that the war cry was a little quieter and i know um there was a lot of people annoying you on social media about that there were i've got more tweets about your war cry and they're tweeting me for some reason go after ian you know his twitter i'm not gonna be able to tell him what to do have you met this guy no chance but it seems like the war cry is back at least why would you then tell people to go after me if you know what I'm like. Why would you say do that? That's not a good idea for anybody to come after me. Hey, listen, our people are absolutely fantastic, and this made me incredibly proud. John Bucket Timer, you sent me something yesterday. This was a meme about our legendary Tati <laughs> Castellanos. For everybody out there on YouTube, you can enjoy this meme, but I'm going to read it for everybody right now who's listening to the show. It's a meme with a dude talking to a chick in a nightclub, and it says... His name is Valentin Castellanos, but his nickname is Tati. He played for NYCFC, but is with Girona in La Liga now. He scored a hat-trick against Real Madrid and is leading the team with 12 goals. His anytime goal score odds are still plus 200 for tomorrow. Is it not crazy value? Buckets, We just because of this meme right here, we are changing the fucking game, man. I love this, man. That's so much fun. I just like that people are getting involved. And I like that people are placing their own bets based on information we give, Ian, when we forget they're even playing. There were people cashing Tati anytime goal scorers last week when I forgot Girona was even on the slate. So you just, that's awesome, dude. We're changing. We're not changing the game. We're creating a new game here, Ian. Can't steal my words from last show buckets, all right? When I say creating a new game, you can't steal my words. You have to come up with your own authentic <laughs> words. Um, I went uh, for a massage yesterday, John Buckets Imer. And does everybody out there who knows, I have been struggling with vertigo. I've been struggling with a stiff neck, headaches, severe headaches, uh, back pain for the last three months now. You might have seen me like tweaking the neck on the YouTube. You might have heard me complaining about vertigo. It's been brutally awful. Well, I went yesterday for a massage recommended by my chiropractors Eric and Aaron shout out to the boys because they enjoy the show um, they said hey go go and visit Gavin he's got a Japanese massage technique that will really help you and I thought this is a great idea I mean why not try it I'm waking up with severe headaches every single day I'm gonna go try it well buckets I can only really describe this as fucking torture 
It was like violence and torture and a massage yesterday. But get this. I woke up this morning. I had no severe headache. It was fucking unbelievable. What do you think about that? What did, what did Gavin do to you? Well, my wife, Nicole, she asked me if I had a happy ending. And I said, well, listen, at the end of it, I was incredibly happy. I didn't have a happy ending. No, I, my name is not Yoshi. But what I will say is that, yes, I do feel a lot better now. The severe headaches are gone. I feel 100%. Well, not quite 100%. I'm still bruised from the fucking massage. But a shout out to Gavin. I may have cried a little bit, but it hurts so good, Gavin. We appreciate you. I'm going to see you next week. Uh, get me in every single week so that I can eventually get rid of this bullshit as well. Uh, Buckets, that's not the only good news that's happening this week. Um, my daughter Madison's turning 17 years old. It's not tomorrow. It's on Saturday. 17 years old, Buckets. Can you believe that? I can't, considering the fact that you don't look a day over like 25, Ian. Right? Right? I like you even more. Too. There we go. Simer. <laughs> now, a quick shout out to my daughter, uh, Madison Louise Joy. Early birthday shout for you. Uh, she was born May 6, 2006 in Hamburg, Germany. Obviously, I was playing for St. Pauli at the time. And believe it or not, that was a World Cup year in Germany. The whole World Cup was in Germany in that year she was born. What a fabulous year it was for me. This is, uh, in my personal opinion, she is now one of the greatest human beings I have ever met. Such a beautiful young lady. She is someone who has the right values in life. Um, she's always trying to make a difference. She, she loves my club, uh, St. Pauli, and their values, trying to help fight against discrimination. Uh, she lives her life in that way as well. She's also um, obsessed with the entertainment space. She loves fashion. She loves music. She likes all the fucking Instagram shit shit she's all about it and she just got accepted into fashion school in glasgow scotland so massive massive shout out to my beautiful daughter madison happy 17th birthday now in buckets i bet you didn't know this one in scotland in the uk in, in great britain you can now officially drive a car at 17 years old but that's about pretty much it what what do you mean well, you couldn't drive a car at 16. Now at 17 years old, you're legally allowed to drive a car. It's a little bit of reverse, you know. I think, it, if I'm not mistaken, here in the United States of America, you can't have sex until you're 18. Um, I don't think you can, like, smoke cigarettes. I don't think you can drink alcohol until you're 21. But you can drive a fucking car at 16 years old. In the can UK, you, it's opposite. You can drink. How old, how old do you have to be to drink in Scotland? I thought the first question you would have asked is how old you have to be to have sex. But drinking oh, is 18 years old in Scotland, UK. Uh, having sex is all 16 years old, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, driving a car is 17 years old. 21 years old is just another fucking birthday. By the time you get to 21 years old, you're considered old as fuck. <laughs> no, I didn't know any of that. I've never been to Europe before, so I've been to... a. Uh... New York and uh, Indiana, and that's about it. So I've not experienced any of the uh, European stuff yet. When are you coming by to New York? I don't know. We'd have to check with Rob, Jay, and uh, Spirit Airlines, see when they're available. <laughs> Jay can't talk right now. He's on the phone with Spirit Airlines as we speak. <laughs> All right, let's get into it. Um, obviously, we're going to extend the show a little bit from the last episode because a lot of you out there were complaining that it wasn't long enough. This is a four-hour show just for all of you out there. Just kidding. It's only going to be about 50 to 60. Uh, congratulations, Buckets. You had a sweep this midweek. I am Woo! so proud of you because you'd worked so hard to make sure you got the right picks. You went three and no, I went one and two. Together as a show, we were back profitable again. So the run is now at one, but we'll take that one show as we build towards two this weekend. How did it make you feel as you look back along your bets? Buckets, please feel free to go about all your bets here. What you got right, where you maybe might have stumbled here. Because guess what? Producer Matt, he's put together something pretty fucking awesome for us. Anybody out there who's on the YouTube platform looking at this one, you'll be able to see a graphic with all of uh, Buckets' picks here. So... Ooh. Let me know, Buckets. How'd you get on? Let us know uh, which ones almost tricked you up. Uh, well, first and foremost, it felt pretty damn good to finally get a sweep here. Ian, I think if I'm not mistaken, you've had sweeps in something like 50% of your shows since we've come back from international breaks. So it was finally my turn for everything to just kind of click. I had three picks for the midweek, and we started with that matchup in the Pokal Cup between SC Freiburg and RB Leipzig. And Ian, I was nervous about this one. This was probably my favorite bet of the entire weekend, but after Leipzig just said, we're done messing around and went up 4-0 pretty early, Freiburg had me worried. I remember I even texted you during this game, and I said, if you're Freiburg, do you even care at this point? 
Do you, do, you, do you go for a goal or do you just wait till next week? And you said they'll get one buckets. Don't worry about it. And they did. Leipzig went down a man. Freiburg got the goal. They ended up losing five to one, but we cashed that first ticket into our bonkers bet. I went to the Azerbaijani Premier League and I once again told everyone Karabag FK just doesn't care anymore. They'll probably score three goals here, but they're not going to play defense. Fry or Karabag went up 2 0 early. Nefchi Baku actually got a red card and then scored twice a man down to prove my point and to cash that ticket as well. And then the parlay, Ian, the beautiful three part parlay with Man City money line, Liverpool money line, and Bodo Glimt money line. Liverpool was the one that had me worried, Ian, but it's not often that a parlay goes as perfect as this. None of the opponents on these three teams scored. Liverpool 1 to 0, Man City 1 to 0, and Bodo Glimt 1 to 0, combined outscoring their opponents 6 to 0 in these three games. Ian, I was probably most worried live about that Freiburg, but honestly, this was relatively sweat free considering how quickly most of these games cashed. Congratulations, buddy. I'm proud of you. I know the hard work that you put in there uh, yes. to making sure that you. You give uh, back to your listeners, your followers, because a lot of people are invested in you. Um, but now you've set the standard high, we're back profitable, and you had the sweep. Now the challenge I'm setting out to you is, can you do the double sweep, which I'm not sure has happened. Now I have, I think maybe 40, 50% of my bets have been sweeps since we come back. But what I will say is, I don't think I've done it back to back buckets. I've sort of gone, you know, one week, yes, one week, close, one week, yes, one week, close. Now the challenge is set for you. Can you go back to back? I did have one good hit here. Obviously, as everybody knows, I had the one and two. The one good hit I had was the Tuesday best bet. It was, of course, Arsenal against Chelsea. I was really looking forward to this one. Arsenal money line, Arsenal first half total goals to be over uh, 0.5 to score in the first half pretty much. That was plus 110 on points bet. Really, really happy with that one. Arsenal won by three goals to one. Martin Odegaard getting a couple of goals. Gabriel Jesus scoring one. Um, here's some statistics for you, John Buckets. I because I want to back these games up with some stats for you before we get into some of the news that's been breaking this week, which has been crazy. Arsenal are the only team in Europe's top five leagues with at least four players with 10 plus league goals and at least three players with 20 plus goal involvements in the Premier League this season. Saka 13 and 11, Odegaard 14 and 7, Martinelli 15 and 5, Jesus 10 and 5. And how about this one here? I gotta just share this one with you. Frank Lampard has now lost each of his last ten matches he's taken charge of across all competitions. Chelsea might be the team to avoid right now. John Bakatayma. Yeah, it's gonna be eleven after this weekend, Ian. That's a little <laughs> foreshadowing to a bet I'll give out later in this show. It's Chelsea's just playing to get to the summer at this point. As long as they don't get relegated, I don't think they care right now. Get to the summer, just survive and move on. Uh, but Arsenal, that was a great hit. There was a lot of ways you could have played that game, but ultimately you found an angle to get us plus value, which a lot of people I saw on social media had trouble getting to those plus odds. It was kind of a tricky one to put multiple pieces together there. Yeah, it was. We had to think about this one really hard. And uh, there are some more stats I'd like to share with you. Gabriel Jesus has now scored 55 Premier League matches and never ended on the losing side when he has scored. Can you believe that? 55 fucking games when he scored? 55 games he's never lost. That's insane that's just weird that's that's a cool stat but that's just weird i mean if he's that much of an impact player i guess manchester city also got the job done this midweek erling Haaland once again on the score sheet manchester city have scored 1000 goals across all competitions under pep guardiola guess how many games he's been in charge of it's going to be a grossly small number i'm going to say 350 close 404 games they have scored 1,000 goals, which is an incredible statistic. Let's get to Erling Haaland, and I want your thoughts on this one right here. Erling Haaland scored his 35th league goal of the season, therefore breaks a Premier League record, era record in a single season. He only needed 31 games to break that record. He has uh, now 35 goals, as I mentioned before. It's the most by a single, campaign, a single player in a single campaign in the English top flight since 1966-67, which is 37. So he's broken a Premier League record, which was held by Alan Shearer and Andy Cole. He's now on 35 he's got a fucking ton of games left to go he's chasing an english all-time record which is all the way down to when the fucking war was taking place 1966 67 i know i'm just kidding 66 67 which was the beatles era is that record 37 goals he's only two away from that buckets does he break it 
He breaks it. Absolutely. He probably breaks it in his next game, if we're being honest. His his form is incredible. And the fact that he's already breaking the Premier League records, and this is his first season in the Premier League, there was no adjustment period. He just came out and immediately started dominating. I think he breaks it, and I have him potentially getting two goals in this next game, Ian. This next game is against Leeds United. Guess where Erling yeah. Holland was born? Uh, Leeds? Erling Holland was born in oh. Leeds. Yeah, <laughs> he may play for Norway. He may look like a fucking Viking, but this dude was born in Leeds because his father played for Leeds United, right? I mean, we must not forget that he also played for Manchester City, but wow, this is absolutely incredible. All right, let's get to some of the news that have been breaking around the soccer world recently. We have to start with Lionel Messi and the crazy news surrounding him. Messi being suspended. Lionel Messi suspended two weeks by Paris Saint-Germain following an unauthorized trip to Saudi Arabia with his family. Now, Fabrizio Romano pointed out that Messi will also leave Paris Saint-Germain at the end of the season. There's no doubts about that anymore. Behind the scenes, it's now understood that Leo's father, Jorge, communicated the decision to PSG after one month ago to the project that he was about to move. It is at the final breaking point. Now, Jonathan Johnson told me yesterday that Messi is now no longer allowed to be anywhere near Paris Saint-Germain. He's not allowed to be at the training facility. He's not allowed to go to the games. He's clearly not allowed to play in games. And this is Lionel Messi that we're talking about. Now, this ruling came from president and CEO Nasser El Khalifi. Um, he's the main man there trying to change the culture at Paris Saint-Germain. My personal thought on this one is well done. Well done to Nasser El Khalifi. Now, if you've got a player like Lionel Messi, clearly he feels like he's untouchable. He can make his own rules. And what he thought was they were going to win a game, he was going to get some time off, he could go to fucking Saudi Arabia, do his little promotion. What happened was they went on and lost that game after going down a man. They lost that game. He didn't get a day off, but he took a day off anyway. That should never, ever happen. If I'm a professional player, which I was one time in my life, Never ever would I think about taking a day off when all of my teammates, when everybody at the club was working that next day and had to be into training and had to be re ready to prepare for that next game. Never in a million years. Now, I'm not knocking Lionel Messi because he's an absolute genius, best player I've ever seen in my life. I'm not knocking Lionel Messi, who's won the World Cup and who is an absolute legend of the game. And at his age, yeah, I get it. But he's still a pro. He's still getting paid. Therefore, Live by the rules. You have to stick by the rules. If you don't stick by the rules, you deserve a suspension like this one there, which brings me to my point, Bucket. Now, where are we going to see Lionel Messi go to? I actually pulled up the odds from points bet, and the odds are absolutely ridiculous. And I want your personal opinion here. There's a lot of big choices here. He goes back to Barcelona, minus 150. Then we get to plus numbers. We go all the way to Wrexham FC, who are plus 50,000 right there with about 10 teams in between Manchester City into Miami. He could go to the Saudi League, which is plus 250, massive money being offered to him. Manchester United plus 2,500, LAFC plus 2,000, Arsenal plus 33, Chelsea plus 33. I mean, this is uh, big numbers right here about where Lionel Messi could end up next. But the favorite is Barcelona. Your thoughts, Buckets? Massive numbers. And I do think it's really funny that Wrexham is on that list at plus 50,000. It'd just be a fun story. I know they're going after Gareth Bale. They're trying to bring in some new talent. Don't think that's going to hit, but it's just cool to see it on the list. Ian, I'm almost kind of not leaning towards any of these at this point. I'm looking at a Lionel Messi that since he won the World Cup with Argentina at the end of last year, he's almost kind of mentally checked out. I would not say he's had success at PSG this season. And for me, it's kind of getting towards the end where he just wants to be done at this point. I If I had to pick something... I'm almost leaning towards that Saudi Arabia pick just to get as much money as you can in these last few years. But for me, this is Lionel Messi that just doesn't care. And I don't think Barcelona is going to be able to break or not break the financial fair play laws to get him in without selling, you know, damn near everyone. So if he's not going to Barcelona, I've go, got him going to Saudi Arabia. But I honestly have no idea here. I just don't know what kind of mentality Messi's in right now because he just seems done to me. Did you see the fact that PSG fans are now going fucking nuts? Crazy. They are going nuts. Video broke today with fans outside Neymar's house. If you yep. get a chance, have a look at this. I mean, this was at Messi yesterday, the chants about Messi. They were frustrated. They were calling him all sorts of names. This is outside the stadium, outside the training facility. This is Neymar's house right here. If you're watching on YouTube, if you're not watching on YouTube, go check it out on social media. Outside Neymar's house. 
100, 200 ultra fans just screaming for them to get the fuck out of Paris. I mean, this is not a good situation or a good time for people who are in Paris, playing for Paris Saint-Germain, making big money and clearly have failed. And right now they're taking a piss out of the club. So um, I really feel sorry for them as human beings and their family. But at some point, you have to stamp your authority. And that's what the president and CEO Nasser Khalifi is doing. Um, apparently, PSG are in talks with Jose Mourinho buckets about coming back to the club here. Um, Christophe Gaultier's time at PSG is most likely going to be up. Now, what is your thoughts on Jose Mourinho potentially going back to PSG or going to PSG for the first time? I don't think he will, personally. I've seen kind of, and this is social media, so of course there's rumors all over the place. I've seen things that he's enjoying his time at Roma. I've seen times that said that he hated his time at Roma. I will say, did you see recently, Ian, this morning, uh, Mourinho came out saying that he wears a microphone during all his games now uh, to record the conversations with the refs because it seems so biased towards him and what his team's doing. Did you see any of that? I didn't see that, but it sounds very (laughs) Mourinho-like. It's very Mourinho. He said, I'm recording everything. I have to protect myself. I have to protect this team. I think he's going to stay just because of the messy state that PSG is in. To me, that's not necessarily a winning club anymore. They're going to get rid of Neymar. They're going to get rid of Messi. I don't know if he wants to deal with another project that could be kind of a nightmare with PSG right now. I'm getting a note here from producer Jay. He's saying, uh, Buckets, when you move to New York, you're going to have to wear a wire. You're going to have to have a microphone everywhere you go in this city because we're going to need For to protection. have evidence that you didn't fuck up somewhere in New York <laughs> City. Um, just my thoughts real quickly on Mourinho. I think the opposite here, Buckets. I actually think it would be a great move for Jose Mourinho to go to PSG. Um, he certainly is someone who's perfect for the locker room with big personalities. He controls those big personalities. He is a fucking big personality. He's the man himself. He recognizes it. But dealing with key stars, figure players, whatever it may be, superstar players, he's the guy. He knows how to do it. But this is where I think he's a difference maker. Jose Mourinho is a fucking winner. He knows how to win. PSG cannot win the Champions League. They're failing across the board when it comes to the Champions League. Domestically, sure, they can clean up and win games. But we're talking about a Jose Mourinho who has won the Champions League two times already. Once with Porto, once with Inter and did it in fashion. He's been a Spanish champion. He's been an English champion. He's been an Italian champion. Um, He kind of checks all the boxes for what they're looking for so I could very much understand why Jose Mourinho would be first choice for someone like Nasser El Khalifi if he wants to deal with big personalities and control his locker room Jose Mourinho might be the one you have to fucking control let's move on to Bellingham to Real Madrid this is another one that is really broken out Now, Real Madrid are close to completing the deal to send Jude Bellingham. Confirmed in negotiations are progressing to the final stages. Personal terms are almost agreed. Uh, new meeting has been scheduled to complete the agreement with Borussia Dortmund. That's from the one and only Fabrizio Romano. Um, my personal opinion here is this is a fantastic move for player. This is a fantastic move for the club. I mean, this is also great for young English players. I grew up in the UK, Scottish accent. You can hear, even though I was born in the States and and played for the US national teams at youth level, it was important watching these young British players have this mindset of, yeah, we're just going to play in the Premier League or we're going to play in our local teams. Fuck that, man. The world is a big world out there. Go play. Go test yourself. If the Premier League is blocked to you, which is to most young English players, unless you're a superstar, look at what Jude Bellingham did. He made a massive move from Birmingham City in the championship to the Bundesliga to play for Borussia Dortmund. That is sensational. It takes a lot of balls, takes a lot of courage, gone to learn a new language, gone to learn a new culture. But as a 17, 18, 19-year-old kid, This is something that maybe he needed in his life to play week in, week out. This guy's played over 150 games now. This guy's played in the Champions League now. This guy almost won a fucking Bundesliga title this year had they not fucked it up. This is what you need if you're a young player to play week in, to play week out, to get yourself this big opportunity. And I can only imagine, Buckets, that the price tag for Jude Bellingham to Real Madrid is going to be really high, probably over 120 million euros. But how about this? I want your thoughts on this. Real Madrid's midfield for the next 10 years, if they sign Jude Bellingham, is pretty much set. Chalmany, Valverde, Cabellos, Camavinga, throw in Jude Bellingham. What else do you need? And next year, you've got Toni Kroos and Luka Modric. Holy shit, Real Madrid are a danger once again next year. 
that is going to be the best midfield in the footballing world for the next 10 years, hands down. And it's going to be the type of midfield that when they get to that 70th minute and bring on their second tier of players, they're still just going to run over teams. I agree with you, Ian. I'm on the same boat. This is a tremendous pickup for Real Madrid and a tremendous choice made by Jude Bellingham. Everything you already touched on, he's staying away from the pressures of the EPL. There's been so many news outlets and so many pundits saying, of course, he's going to come back to England. He's an English player. It's what he needs to do. And he said, no, I'm going to play with one of the most historic club in all of football. And also, one thing I want to touch on real quick. You said he almost won a Bundesliga title, but or, but they messed it up. Bayern Munich might mess it up still. There's plenty of time for Dortmund to get that back. I have no faith in my boys right now. But I agree. I think this is a great move. It's going to be damn near a record, or a record amount signing. And it's just going to be Real Madrid dominance for the next five or ten years here. Get this one. Three-time NFL Defensive Player of the Year, J.J. Watt, together with his wife, Kalia Watt, <laughs> a former U.S. Women's National Team International, have announced their formal involvement with Burnley Football Club. Minor investment in Burnley Football Club. Buckets, your overall thoughts here. <laughs> this is an NFL superstar and a U.S. Women's International star joining up with a Premier League team now as a minority investor. Brilliant news. I'm I'm all for it. The more investment and the more personality we can get behind these clubs, to me, the better. I did love that the very first tweet I saw about this was saying discount Ryan Reynolds cheats and purchases Premier Club or Premier Club team <laughs> rather than taking a team and growing it. I've I've seen people mad about it. I could not care less. Good to JJ Watt. Good to all of them for what they're doing. Picking in on a good time for Burnley, though, is they just hit promotion. It's a it's a solid involvement. Yeah, it's a shame he didn't get involved about six months ago because his inv- investment might have maybe doubled by that point oh, of yeah. getting to the Premier League. Congratulations to Kalia and JJ Watt for their investment in Burnley Football Club. I actually know the ownership group at Burnley Football Club Bucket. So if producer Rob can pull his finger out his ass and we can make the show blow up, we might have been able to get involved ourselves. We might still be able to get involved with Burnley Football Club. Good good friend of mine, Alan Pace, he was the president of Real Salt Lake when I played there, now owns Burnley Football Club. And what a great human being he is. He thinks out of the box. He's thinking a new way. Um, how can we progress here with the branding? How can we make Burnley Football Club uh, you know, a staple in the Premier League in the United States of America where everybody's tuning in to watch Burnley Football Club? No better way than getting a former NFL NFL player and a U.S. women's international soccer player star to fucking invest with your group. I mean, this is sensational. If you're thinking about commercialization of a club, having someone who's been involved in the NFL and a U.S. women's national team soccer player, two of the most watched fucking sports in this country. I mean, NFL is absolutely, but women's national team soccer. I mean, most watched soccer in this country. We can't even deny that. To have those involved in soccer is unbelievable. This is great business for Burnley Football Club, great business for the Premier League, great business for J.J. Watt and his wife as well. Bucket, should we take a break? A quick one. A quick one. All right. Quick break for everybody out there. We'll be back in about 10 seconds. You are listening and watching Stoppage Time. Welcome back to Stoppage Time with IPJ and the Bucket Man John Hey, Buckets, what do you say we just fucking have it from now on? Let's just have it, man. Let's just have it. All right. A few of the top games to look forward to across Europe this weekend. Buckets, I broke it down for you. Some huge games, man. In the Premier League, we have City at Leeds. We have Liverpool against Brentford. We have Newcastle against Arsenal. What a game that is. In Serie A, we've got Milan against Lazio. We've got Roma against Inter. We've got Napoli against Fiorentina with a bit of celebration on the field to look forward to. Bundesliga, Leverkusen against Schalke on Friday. We've got Freiburg against Leipzig, part two. Then we also have Bayern Munich, his beloved. Beloved Bayern Munich. They're at Werder Bremen. And in France, we've got Longs against Marseille, Rams against Lille, PSG at Troy with no Lionel Messi. Remember, we talked about it. And in Spain, it is the Copa del Rey final. Real Madrid against Osasuna. Buckets, we're going to mix it up this weekend. We're going to try something new, something different. I want five bets from you. I want a best bet for the Premier League. I want a parlay from the Premier League. I want a best bet from somewhere around the rest of Europe or somewhere crazy. Then I want a best uh, parlay from you from around Europe as well. And then if you can, give me a bonkers bet where I give you the freedom to go anywhere you want. Now, I know you've been excited and you've been waiting in anticipation to give me your Premier League best bet. Take it away. Yeah, I'm going to jump into it. And this is my new favorite way to bet on the Premier League. And it's just bet against Chelsea. That's all you got to do to make money at this point. It's just do not trust Chelsea under Frank Lampard. 
I am looking at that matchup between Bournemouth and Chelsea, and I don't necessarily even have faith in Bournemouth, even though they have won four of their last six Premier League games. And even though they've been doing really well historically against Chelsea, I think the odds are just too good here to ignore. This is a fate of Chelsea who have lost six games straight for their first time since 1993. And I'm taking Bournemouth double chance, which means if Bournemouth wins or if they draw, this ticket cashes in because this was sitting at minus 130 on points bet. And that is insulting to me. That is insulting to you. That is insulting to Bournemouth. I cannot imagine Chelsea are going to be able to string things together all of a sudden out of nowhere. I think Bournemouth at the very, very worst case scenario, get a draw here. And either way, that still cashes for us. Interesting one. One I certainly had a little look at. One I just stepped away for a quick second here because I know that Chelsea at some point are going to break this duck. I just hope it's not this weekend. I love your double chance look right there. Bournemouth are playing well right now. Mm -hmm. Really good football. They're obviously fighting them their way away from the relegation zone. So really love that bet. Buckets, you know... When uh, we bring you to New York and you have this wonderful food from the restaurant Catch, and every time you say, hey, can we go back to Catch? Can we keep going back to Catch? Why? Because it was just so delicious, right? Exactly. I'm going back to a bet that I love <laughs> that's just too delicious. I can't turn my head away from it. My best bet for the Premier League this weekend is an old one, and it's one I have had success on recently. It is, of course, Nottingham Forest against Southampton. Forest plus 100 on the money line. Southampton plus 260 on the money line. My bet here is Nottingham Forest money line plus 100 <laughs> on points bet oh yes you best believe it i'm going back there i mean double chance and uh, money line hit for us recently obviously with forest against brighton let's dance again i say john bucketheimer let me try to make sense of this for you one more time nottingham forest our third bottom in the premier league one win in their last 13 premier league games however nottingham forest at home they are tough to beat. Here's their statistics for the 17 games that they've played at home this season. They've lost only five games. They've won only six games. They've drawn six games. They've scored 22. They've let in 21 goals. Now, this is not a statistic for a team that is going to go down. Do your business at home. Win games. Draw games. Pick up points at home, and especially when you consider the games that are happening around them in the relegation zone. City at Leeds, Leicester City at Fulham, Everton at Brighton, West Ham against Manchester United all at the weekend. This is a big chance for Nottingham Forest to get out of the fucking relegation zone and put themselves away from danger. This is their cup final game. Southampton are bottom of the league, six wins and let in 60 goals here. Even though they have won four of their six on the road, their last six on the road, They've let in 29 goals <laughs> from those games. And they've lost 11 away games all season long. Forest beat them in January. Everything's telling me that Nottingham Forest are going to get this done. John back at Zimmer, what's your thoughts? I'm backing you on this one 100% because if I wasn't going on the fade Chelsea train, I was going to be on Forest one and a half team total here. This is do or die against a Southampton team that is basically already dead. Give me Forest all day in this one, Ian. Give me your Premier League parlay, John Bukatima. So speaking of catch and going back to things that are delicious that have worked for us before, that's exactly what we're doing with this parlay. Earlier this week, we cashed on a parlay with Manchester City, Liverpool, and Bodo Glimt. This one's slightly different, but it's a three-way money line parlay with Manchester City, Liverpool, and Aston Villa this time, Ian, to replace Bodo Glimt. It's sitting just below plus 300. As I said last time, Manchester City money line will always be a parlay piece for me for the rest of the season because I truly believe they're just going to win out the season and Leeds are not an opponent that's going to give them a hard time here. Uh, Liverpool versus Brentford is going to be kind of a tricky one, but again, it's Liverpool at home. And when Liverpool plays at home, you don't overthink it. You just bet them. They have to keep winning if they want a shot at a European spot here. So I'm back in Liverpool. And then the tricky one here that's sitting at plus odds as a single is that Aston Villa versus Wolves, Aston Villa on the money line. I know that Aston Villa are coming off of a loss to Manchester United, but remember, that was their first loss in 12 Premier League matches. Unai Emery has done an incredible job with his Aston Villa squad, and they have scored in every single one of their games since he's been there until that Manchester United loss. I'm expecting a very big bounce back against the Wolves team that is very, very hit or miss here, Ian. And a plus 300 with these three together, I'm really only worried about the Aston Villa line. What I mean... 
at the end there, you said Aston Villa. Before that, the five times before that, you said Aston Villa. It's not fucking oh. David Villa. What are you saying? Villa? Villa, Villa. I'm just, I'm trying to sound exotic with this take here, Ian. Man, you've been digging far too deep in Karabagi and <laughs> Azerbaijani leagues recently, and your language is just getting crazy. Let's get to my Premier League parlay buckets. I'm not too far away from you. Love that bet that you're going with. Certainly had a little look at it as well. Now, I'm trying something different and unique. John Buckets, Imer, you'll know all about this one. This is the Premier League parlay I'm going with. Liverpool against Brentford, Newcastle against Arsenal. My bet here is a two-leg parlay, both teams to score in both matches it's sitting at plus 152 on points bet and as everybody knows i love a parlay and i do love a buckets bttS special so i'm going to go for it liverpool against brentford let's turn our attention to that one first and foremost liverpool have scored 66 goals this season 44 of them have come at home that supports john bucket timer with his bet here and i think liverpool will score maybe three or four goals in this game they've won the last five games in a row and are unbeaten in eight games Brentford, however, are one of the sauciest teams in the Premier League right now. 52 goals scored, 20 goals scored away from home. They've only lost six games on the road this season. They're a tough team to beat. Head-to-head in the last three games, there's been 13 goals here, John Bucketheimer. Each team has won one, each team has drawn one, each team has lost one. So, yes, I think that one has BTTS all over it, even though I think Liverpool are favourites to win that game. Newcastle against Arsenal is which... It's probably why we're getting into plus numbers here. Plus 152 on points, but Newcastle against Arsenal is a tasty game. I mean, this is a top-of-the-table clash with teams that are second and third in the Premier League. Newcastle have scored 61 goals all season. 32 of them have come at home. They've scored 13 goals in their last three games alone. 13 goals. They're dangerous. Deadly dangerous. Arsenal still chasing the title. Have scored 81 goals this season. Sensational. 33 of those goals have been on the road. Even 33 goals on the road from this campaign is fabulous to see. Only lost three games on the road all season and are the best away team in the Premier League. Now, BTTS, and this is where it gets tricky here, John Bucket Time, and I want your thought by this one because I did do my research and I do dive into the dark side sometimes. BTTS has not hit in the last nine games between Arsenal and Newcastle across all competitions. Now, many people seeing that would say, hey, you know what? Maybe I'm going to stay away from this bit, but not me. I think it's time that this changes. Newcastle score, Arsenal score, Brentford score, Liverpool to score, John Bagatimer. Tell me what you think. Ian, I love it. And this is a perfect example and a great teaching moment about why head-to-head history does not always matter when you're looking at soccer matches. Yes, as you've mentioned, what was it, nine times in a row now, BTTS has not hit between these two teams. None of those times were the teams in the current form that they are in now. Arsenal is dominant on the attack, but they are leaking goals massively on defenses. BTTS has hit in nine of the last ten matches that Arsenal has played in. Meanwhile, Newcastle has hit theirs in seven of their last 10 matches. These are two teams that aren't really focused on defense anymore. They're just getting these slugfests that are tremendous to watch here. And these are just different squads than we've seen in these last nine encounters, Ian. I think that one hits potentially, dare I say it, in the first half there. I'm expecting a lot of goals in both of these matches. Oh, you've just enticed me. Maybe I'll go for the first half one as well. Please, everybody out there, bet responsibly. With all of the bets that we're giving you and providing you, we're giving you information. What you choose to do with the bets is up to you, but please, we recommend that you bet responsibly. Buckets, there are so many cracking games across Europe this weekend. Give me your best bet from one that you have found because there are some tasty fixtures. So this is going to be a throwback to one of the earlier shows we did here with Stoppage Time. I'm going to France's Ligue 2. So the second flight of French soccer, and I'm looking at a matchup between one of your favorite teams, Ian, and a team that there's no way in hell I'm going to pronounce right. A.S. Saint-Etienne versus Gwingamp, Gwingamp, something like that. Don't really care. All that matters is that we're going to make money off this game, have a couple drinks to celebrate, and have a good Saturday night. I'm going with the bucket special of BTTS here, sitting at minus 120, because these are two, again, of the most attack-heavy teams in their respective league. We've bet this match before on both teams to score, and we've hit it many times here on the show. St. Etienne has now scored in 12 matches straight in Ligue 2 and are finally finding their attacking and winning stride as they are running over teams, but they're running over teams exactly how Arsenal tends to do it, which is where they don't play defense at the same time. 
Both teams to score has hit in seven of their last 10 matches. Meanwhile, both teams to score has hit in seven of the last 10 matches for Glyngomp here, as they have scored in eight of their last 10. And both of these teams are at the point in the table and at the point in the season to where it doesn't really matter whether they win or lose too much. They're not going to go up. They're not going to go down, which allows them to play a very free and open style of soccer, which has led to very high scoring encounters in all of their last games. Buckets, who are Sintete and Plain? Oh, I, Gwyn, Gwyn Gomp? Gwyn Gomp? <laughs> Gwyn Gomp? Gwyn Gomp. Gwyn Gomp. Gwyn Gomp. If I, if I can't say Aston Villa right, I'm not going to be able to say Gin Gomp right. Let me just throw that out there. It's like something you asked uh, when we go to get some food at 2 a.m. in New York City after we've been to the pub all night. You go to one of these stalls and you ask if you can have a Gin Gomp. <laughs> Nobody knows what the fuck you're talking about, but you get a plate of something anyway to take home with and you. And it's going to be delicious. It's going to be great. You know it's delicious, baby. Even a night out with us is delicious. And there's a lot of people out there asking, hey, when can I come hang out with you guys? When can I be in studio with you guys? Can you give us an opportunity to be on live with you? There's a lot of people out there interested in actually joining the show at some point. I think it would be a good idea to invite maybe one or two of our loyal listeners to play a role in our show. Buckets, let me give you my best of the rest, best bet around Europe. I'm turning my attention to... The Bundesliga, of course, it is my league. And I'm going to a game that recently was an interesting one. This time, to the Bundesliga. Freiburg against Leipzig. Freiburg plus 300 on the money line. Leipzig minus 115 on the money line. My bet here is simply both teams to score. Buckets classic. I'm going to it. I very closely and almost took double chance for Freiburg. It was minus 110 on points bet. If you want to go there, I support you. Double chance, Freiburg, mark my words, has a chance of hitting. And I'm going to tell you why. This was a crazy game for me this past week. Um, obviously, we recognize in the DFB Pokal, Leipzig had an unbelievable victory. It was five goals to one. They might move on to the final of the DFB Pokal. Um, but this is where it gets interesting. We're getting to the closing stages of the Bundesliga. Freiburg are fourth in the Bundesliga on 56 points. Leipzig are fifth in the Bundesliga, and they have... 54 points. They both have won 16 games. Now get this. Top four in the Bundesliga gets a Champions League spot, meaning that Freiburg, although they got pumped in the German Cup by Leipzig recently, they need to win to have any chance of going into the Champions League. And what a feeling it would be to knock Leipzig out of the top four forever. Get out of the top four. Go play in Europa League. Freiburg move on to the Champions League. Christian Strike and his craziness in the Champions League. Yes, please. Let me just uh, give you some statistics to back me up here. Freiburg's record against Leipzig is not very good. No wins in the last eight games across all competitions. They have had, however, a very top season. They've won 16, nine games at home, lost only two games at home. Leipzig, massive 5-1 winners, as I just mentioned, against Freiburg to get to the final of the German Cup. Only five Bundesliga wins on the road from 15 this season long for Leipzig, which is why they're out of the top four. They want to be in the Champions League, they need to be in the Champions League. Red Bull demands it. Now, I know that the club is called Rasenball Sport Leipzig, but we all know that it's RB Leipzig because of Red Bull. So we recognize it. We see it on the jersey. They've won five of the last six games across all competitions. Now, get this one, Buckets. John Buckets. I'm at BTTS has hit in the last five games between these two teams. It has hit 13 times in the last 17 games going back to 2015. I'm going to say to everybody out there, bet responsibly, but maybe I'll be going for more than one unit on this game. Buckets, your thoughts? This shouldn't be minus 115, Ian. It really, really shouldn't be. I personally would play this all the way up to that minus 150. I'd probably use it as a parlay piece at minus 175 here. This is a really, really good look. And when you've got two teams in a situation to where it's either win and get the Champions League glory and money and everything or lose and probably don't, whatever team goes down one nil here early, it is going to be nothing but aggressive, abrasive, astonishing attack for the rest of the game. It is going to be an absolute blitz here by whatever team goes down. And I see both teams to score and probably the over here or hitting here as well. I love the BTTS look here, Ian. But because you got a parlay for me for all of the other games that are taking place around the world. Oh, you know I do, Ian, and I'm going to keep referencing catch because that food was so damn good, and I miss it so much. And also, shout out to our loyal listener, Ed, for this one, because this is the Bundesliga 2 first half goal parlay, taking all four Bundesliga 2 matches on Saturday morning, and all we're betting on is for each game to have at least one goal 
in the first half. That is, of course, the matches between Darmstadt and St. Pauli, Ian's club, Forza. Karl Schur and Hanover, Dusseldorf and Holstein, and then Hansa Rostock and Jan Regensburg. Just a goal in each one of these games in the first half at plus 220. I could just continue to beat this dead horse, but we've talked about this exact bet so many times. This is the German second Bundesliga. This is the league where you see goals, and this is the league where teams start up immediately. There's no 20 minutes of figuring each other out or any of that nonsense. It is go for goals out the gate. And at plus 220, I've been taking this every week at this point, Ian. It's just so much fun to watch this parlay come into action. See, this is where we have inspired a lot of people out there to use the information that we provide to make their own bets. And Ed, who clearly does it every single week automatically, <laughs> similar to me, um, I do it as well. I don't even think about it. As soon as it's available, I put it on because... It's inevitable that it's going to hit more often than not. I would say the percentage, I haven't double-checked this, so don't mark my words here, but the percentage is, is probably plus 60 70% here that you're going to see a goal in the first half from these games. And it might even be more in the second Bundesliga. We could even see as high as an 80% success rate with this bet. So love it, Buckets. Automatic tail for me anyway. Um, I placed this bet. 14 weeks ago. Let's move on to my parlay. <laughs> it is, of course, the best of the rest, John Bucketheimer. I'm looking at a classic coming back once again for my parlay. Hearts against Celtic, Rangers against Aberdeen, Borussia Dortmund against Wolfsburg. Throwing in a little Bratwurst right there. My bet here is the three-leg parlay. Celtic, Rangers and Dortmund plus 152 on points bet. The Scottish classic with, as I just mentioned, the German Bratwurst thrown in there. Hearts against Celtic is a cracking game to look forward to. Celtic are top of the league with 92 points. Celtic will win the league if they beat Hearts on Sunday. If they do not win at the weekend, they play Rangers next week. At Ibrox, they certainly want to be champions before they go there. Celtic have won 30 from 33 games this season, which is just incredible. They've scored 103 goals this season from 33 games. Wow. They've lost only one game. And Celtic are chasing this domestic treble, which, of course, knocking out Rangers in the semifinal of the Scottish Cup just recently last week. Uh, they're in a the final now against Inverness, if I'm not mistaken. Then they have already won the League Cup. They will want to win this weekend. Now, Rangers, on the other hand, are at home against Aberdeen. Normally, this one is a game I might just stay away from. Rangers lost the Scottish Cup semifinals. I just mentioned to Celtic last week. They're second in the Premier League. They lost to Aberdeen the week before that. You might remember, we had them in a parlay. They lost to Aberdeen. They've lost three of the last four competitive games now. This is not how Rangers drew this up. This is not how I think they'll finish the season either. Rangers still have a good chance to obviously finish the season with a high note and for sure they'll want revenge against Aberdeen. But more importantly, Rangers will want the opportunity to see if they can play Celtic and stop them from winning the title at Ibrox. So they need to get this victory against Aberdeen. Rangers, zero defeats at home all season long, and they've let in only 11 goals this season. So this is an absolute guaranteed win as far as I'm concerned. And I know they just lost to Aberdeen recently. Fuck that. They're going to win. Wolfsburg are at Dortmund. Now, I'm going for Borussia Dortmund here. Um, they did break my heart last week against Bochum. Um, a goal would have made my betting month, let alone my betting week against Bochum there. Uh, me and Buckets both annoyed by them. But they have the best home record in the Bundesliga. They're just a sensational team to watch play. They are electrifying at home. Away from home, bit dodgy. Maybe I'm going to stay away from them between now and the end of the season. They've won 12 from 14 games at home, scored a whopping 42 goals from those 12, 14 games, excuse me. This game last year, Borussia Dortmund beat Wolfsburg six goals to one. And guess who scored that day for Borussia Dortmund? Oh, yes, it was one Erling Haaland. He scored a double that day for Borussia Dortmund. It feels like and sounds like it was a lifetime ago that he was playing for Dortmund. Wolfsburg are not too bad recently. They've won three of the last four on the road. And Nico Kovac has got them playing well, but Borussia Dortmund far too strong here. Buckets, your thoughts? It's an auto tail. I'll tell that bet every time you place it. It's what we do with this Ian parlay that involves Rangers and Celtic here. But I'm with you big time on Dortmund here. Dortmund has let me down as well as you uh, multiple times in recent weeks. But this is kind of their last chance. If they don't get three points out of this match, there's no way in hell they're going to catch up to Bayern Munich in these last couple games. It's a game they need to win and they need to win decisively. I love that. And I might actually individually bet kind of a ladder system with Dortmund goals in that matchup. I see a lot of goals coming out of that match. Potentially be TTS, but I don't think it's going to matter 
when Dortmund score four or five there. Buckets, I know we provide like 10 bets for our loyal listeners over <laughs> the weekend, but how many fucking bets do you place a weekend, man? Last weekend, do we want the honest number? Yeah. That's From Friday to Sunday last weekend, I had 191 bets placed on soccer. 191 bets. And yeah. we're promoting betting responsibly. I hope these units are fucking small. <laughs> Very time. I'm a big. I'm a big live better. There's so much value in watching one of these games than maybe betting seven or eight times on the same game. I hear but you, but responsibly, of course. I hear you. Listen, it's very difficult. Obviously, we know football. We know the game. We know the betting space. You don't know how the story is going to end within the game. Any sports game, you have no idea how it's going to end. But live betting, I have enjoyed so much. I mean, it's been really unbelievable. We have had our heart broken a little bit recently with Dortmund in particular and um, let me down, but I've had so much success. And a lot of my big wins are watching a game and just knowing that a team has an advantage. You hope they score. You need luck that they score, but you can kind of read a game. They're going to get opportunity. And that's what you're betting on. You're betting on the fact that you're watching this game. You see where the weight is uh, obviously pushed to one side. So therefore, you're betting. At some point, we have to go live with this, right? We have to. There's just too much value in betting live to not do a live show here with Points Bet because it's a tremendous resource that we can bring to viewers. Producer Jay is asking if uh, we do a live show at the weekend, will you have your shirt off or will you have your shirt on when we go live? Of course, that was Jay wanting to know about that. Jay, I'll have my shirt off. Don't worry, okay? I know what's going to bring in the views. I'll take care of it. Producer Ed is asking if you will have your <laughs> pants on or pants off for the no show. No comment. No comment. No comment to Producer Ed right there. Okay, let's move on and get to your what the fuck bet. I mean, I need to know what bonkers bet you're giving me this weekend because this to me I don't, I'm, I'm just gonna put it out there talking about betting responsibly i don't care what you say buckets i'm betting this one go let's do it and i just want to say real quick all the bets i've given out so far have taken place on saturday this is the one bet that takes place on friday and it takes place at 7 a.m tomorrow so get this bet in tonight ian of course i'm looking at the chinese super league <laughs> in a historic matchup between Wuhan Three Towns and Jai Zhang Professional FC. And we're taking Wuhan Three Towns money line plus over one and a half goals in this game to get that juice down to playable odds at minus 135 on points bet. The Chinese Super League, if you've never watched it before, is a mess right now. Over the past couple of years, the Chinese Super League has gone through different political regulations that have caused some teams to sell a lot of their foreign players. A lot of the Brazilian stars that did play for Wuhan and did play for Jai Zhang are no longer there anymore. And so the table is kind of a mess. But one thing we're seeing that we're, we just love here is, I'm not saying this right, Zhejiang Professional is terrible right now. They finished third in the Chinese Super League as one of the best scoring and best defensive teams in all of China. And now they are the only team in China that has not won a game yet. They've lost all four of, the, or all four of their first four games and they've conceded two goals in all four of their first four games. This is a team that had to kind of sack half of their starting 11, and now they're just existing in this league. They're not going to win. They're not going to do anything. And Wuhan's probably going to end up putting three or four goals past them in this match, Ian. Wow. I don't really have much of a comment because you can't pronounce the name, so there's not much chance of me pronouncing <laughs> the names of those two teams. Here's my WTF bet before we get out of here. Um, I'm looking for big, big-time results in the second Bundesliga. We love to go to the lower divisions because there's always a ton of goals. Second Bundesliga is getting really interesting now. I'm looking at Heidenheim against Mag Magdeburg, Haasfall, Hamburg against Paderborn. Now, my best bet here is a two-leg parlay between these two clubs, Heidenheim to win against Magdeburg and Haasfall Hamburg to win against Paderborn. Plus 206 on points bet. I absolutely love German football. Yes, everybody knows that one. I do watch a ton of second division because my beloved FC St. Pauli are playing in the second league. But I also played for HSV Hamburg. Not many people out there know that unless you've actually gone and Googled which teams I played for. Hamburg was my first team in Germany, HSV Hamburg. They were in the Champions League at the time when I was there, and I had a blast playing there. But that's when I also fell in love with St. Pauli. So I thank them for introducing me to St. Pauli. But I also watch for the results because they're the city rival from St. Pauli and not necessarily wanting them to do well. I want both clubs in Hamburg to do well, St. Pauli more so. 
But I also follow the results because I want to see them get back into the top division. Now, plus 206 on points bet. This one has a really good shot here. Hamburg against Paderborn is third against fourth in the second division. It's the two high scoring teams in this Vita Liga as well. Hamburg, 60 goals scored, 34 at home, 10 wins at home this season. Only two home games left to try and get themselves into the top two places. Top two in the second division gets automatic promotion to the Bundesliga. They lost their last two away games but won their last two home games. And in those two home games, unfortunately, they scored 10 goals. Four of them were against my St. Pauli. Uh, Paderborn are a good side, however, and they are fourth place for a good reason they've got 15 wins this season which is a spectacular number but only four away wins caught my attention and only 18 goals scored in their away games this is really where it gets interesting Hamburg have won the last four from five meetings so I think that this is going to be an HSV Hamburg win bet responsibly on that one but if you're looking for a nugget here HSV Hamburg are minus 110 on the money line which might be worth a shout if you wanted to bet it individually the other game in my parlay is Heidenheim against Magdeburg Heidenheim are second place in the Bundesliga right now impressive 17 wins in the second division which is outstanding they have the best home record in the second division now, not many of you out there know where the fuck Heidenheim is. 11 wins from 15, really impressive. They lost only one game at home this season. And that game at home that they lost was to my club, FC St. Pauli. Oh, yes. <laughs> they have scored 40 goals as well at home. So they're a dangerous side. Magdeburg on the other hand are a mid-table team. The 38 points in the mid-table of the second division. 11 wins, 14 losses. In my personal opinion, they don't care about this game. They can't go up. They can't go down. I've been in this position where you've got five games left, four games left. You don't really care what happens. You're just turning up and hoping the game goes quickly so you can get out of there and go on vacation. Head to head, they've only played each other three times and there has been zero wins from Magdeburg in those three times. Only the one win for Heidenheim. I think they make it two this weekend. So back-to-back -back parlays for me in the second Bundesliga, plus two or six on points bet. John Bucketheimer, that's another show in the books. Episode number 59. We went a bit longer this time because everybody's been demanding it, John Bucketheimer. Your thoughts on the show? How do you think about the new production? You know, the, the format that producer Rob put together for us? Not bad, huh? Not bad at all, Rob. Good job. Thank you for all the time that you put into making this show a reality here. And I, I liked it, Ian. I, I thought it was pretty good. I thought it was good as well. And I'd like our listeners out there to let us know what they think about this format here. We've extended the show a little bit for you. We've also brought back the war cry for you. Producer Rob is now, you know, putting his thing together in a rundown for us, for us, so that our loyal listeners can get exactly what they're demanding out there. So if you're listening to the show whether it's on YouTube or on the podcast platforms, drop in a comment and let us know what you think about the show. Let us know what you love about the show. Let us know what you want to see more of in the show. Let us know what you fucking hate. No, no, no. Don't mention buckets, all right? He's, he's here for good. He's here for good. He's not going away. But please let us know if there's something out there that you don't like. We will try to do our best to change it. But if we love it, you've got no fucking chance. Buckets, we are back next week on Monday with a monster show because Champions League is back next week. UEFA is back next week. There's a lot to look forward to. I forgot Champions League is back next week. How embarrassing is that? That This is my job and I was just caught off by the... I got a lot of time to dig into the research here, but we're going to have a tremendous show here. We're probably going to bet Man City to win everything, at least if you're me, but it's going to be a good show, Ian. I'm excited for it. Before we do get the hell out of here, for those loyal listeners out there who have been demanding something from us, John Bucket Timer, it is a recap. So for those fuckers who out there don't listen to our <laughs> show and just skip forward to the recap scream, yeah, feel free to jump to this moment right now. No, 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 no. I'm only kidding. Make sure you're watching and listening to the show. You can learn something as to why we're making these picks. But everybody out there, the, the screen that you're seeing right now is just for you. We are demanding it just for you. What are you laughing at, Buckets? What are you laughing at? Explain it to the people who are out there not watching on YouTube what you're laughing at. Ian, how old are you in that picture? Oh, you know. I'm just going to ask you one thing. Was I good looking in that picture? You are Good looking in the picture, yes. How old do you think I was in that picture? 22. And you just said that I don't look a day older than 25, 45 minutes just, ago. 
felt like an hour and a half ago with how long the show was in, but <laughs> 21. <laughs> Yeah, there it is. All right, there's my best bets this week, and that is my picture from the days of St. Pauli. We just got promoted to the second Bundesliga, the Swede Liga. Uh, 2007, that was, Buckets. Um, I was 26 years old. Uh, what about you, John Bucketsheimer? I mean, realistically, um, I need to see some... Whoa! Oh, God. Come on, Jay! Come on! We're going back to, to high school senior pictures, prom picture type. Rob, J. Ed, who's ever fault that was. Listen, I'm just going to leave yeah. it out there for everybody who's listening on the podcast format because I know we get a lot of people watching this, but there's a lot of Damn people it. out there who are on the treadmill right now and they're like, fuck, I got to stop this and get the YouTube link up so I can see what the fuck the boys are laughing at. Um, what I can describe this is um, this looks like I mean, I don't even know what this looks like. If you've ever watched Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, <laughs> when the girl eats the blueberries and uh, she turns purple blue, well, Buckets looks like that in a shirt and a tie. He looks like he's about 13 years old in this picture as well. Where is that picture from? Dude, that's a that's a high school senior picture. So that was like just during grad picks or whatever. And I just want to say real quick, Ian, that Matt texted me from behind the scenes a different picture and said, can we use this? And I said, of course, Matt. Yeah. So this, I did not approve of this picture usage. This is illegal, I'm pretty sure. Damn near. Yeah, you're fucking not joking that's illegal. You should never, ever look the way you did in that picture right there. Uh, listen, we're back again on Monday for a monster show ahead of UEFA week, and uh, we're going to continue to listen to you. So please make sure you're leaving the comments, you're liking, subscribing, and and on the podcast platform, if you're listening to this, stop your run right now. Stop driving, pull over to the side and leave us a comment as well. We appreciate you. Leave us a five-star rating if that is such a thing on the platform that you're listening to or watching, and let us know how much you're enjoying the show. This means the world to me and John Bucket because this is why we do it we do it for you we do it because we're passionate about entertainment take our knowledge here take what we've said to you make your own bets but most importantly please bet responsibly with whatever we've said here it's so important betting responsibly because we really don't have any idea as to how these games are going to play out we have a feeling we have some knowledge behind our bets but at the same time this is uh, football this is soccer Anything can happen in these games, which means that anything can happen in these bets. So as always, bet responsibly, but most importantly, make sure you fucking have it!